bottom right corner. Yeah, got it. All right, I'm recording this now. All right, so yes, major apologies to all the people watching. It's an experiment because, I don't know, tw streaming is just kind of a weird thing. I feel like you don't really know if it's ever going to work because it doesn't all ever come together until the very end where everybody's trying to like do everything at the same time. Yeah. And that's when your computer and your internet starts to fail you. And just for context, uh, the stream failed and we are no longer live, which you should know since you're watching this as a video that's posted. So you probably know that if you're watching this. <laughs> but if you didn't know, this was once live and now it's not. I hope the Skype recording is working. I haven't really tried to use this before. It usually I works fine. My end that it says you're recording, so. You need to get a little closer to the mic if you don't mind. Yeah, that'd be great, Winston. Anyway, so yes, uh, we've got m myself, who is Ron. We've got Brian, uh, who's been helping out with Sleepy Circuit stuff and who's a great dude. And we've got the mastermind himself, Particles into Waves, also known as Winston, who is going to share some knowledge with us today, I hope. What's that? Can you, like, speak up or, like, get your mic closer to your face? Because I can't hear you, man. Yeah, sorry. It's a little hard to position this little end thing, and I was fiddling with it. But <clears throat> can well, you hear me now? Yeah. yeah, perfect. No perfect. problem. Cool. I'm just going to have to hold it the whole time. That's cool. Like... I'm holding my mic, too. We, uh... We're going to start a fund to get uh, Winston over here a boom arm, you know? Yeah, I just need... <laughs> I don't know, This the end of this one is just... Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, so, yeah. Yeah, let's start from the beginning. Hello, Winston. Who are you? How are you? Uh, if you could just give us a quick intro of, like, where you're at, uh, how you got into video synthesis uh, i've heard some legendary stories about you and how you kind of went off the deep end at one point in your life and decided to buy up a bunch of video synths. i don't know if it's true or not if i think your myths might precede you it's not untrue it's not untrue <laughs> hey man i can't understand double negatives <laughs> uh yeah so my name is winston edwards i live in grand prairie texas which is just outside of dallas or actually it's right in between Dallas and Fort Worth. Um, and uh, yeah, I do music and video. I've been into synthesizers as long as I can remember. Uh, I got my first one when I was like 12, basically, and uh, started getting into modular like five or six years ago and you know blew a bunch of money on that. And then I discovered video synthesis and uh, I was really intrigued by it, but it was also very mystifying at the same time and uh i couldn't really nudge myself to get into it but then you know it's just one of those things like video pops up for sale and i ordered it and as soon as i got it i was addicted and i wanted to find out more and so uh you know that was a little over a year and a half ago now and now i'm you know i'm running with a whole studio of video gear and, and uh just kind of trying to I don't know, trying to come up with my magnum opus or something back here. There's no real point to it. I just like the way it looks. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Wait, so is it It was the video for you, I suppose? Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Those, those LZX guys got you good. <laughs> hey, man, it's a sweet box. And, you know, I used it in my set just now. So, you know, it's still got a lot of utility. Um, yeah. Hey. For all intents and purposes, it's it's a standalone video synth in a box and super portable. Sure. You can take it anywhere, and it's it's got a ton of power in there. I mean, just like a little Swiss Army knife of all the little functions and things that you need to to make like really cool analog video synthesis. Uh, cool. Nice. Wait, so you only did audio before you got that? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, primarily into audio synths, and um, you know, I've definitely done my deep dive into that and then i discovered video and it's just kind of like it's taken me mostly away from music i don't do music nearly as often anymore but uh fortunately i've i've thinned out my studio quite a bit for you know all the keyboards and synths i have it's just taking up way too much room and, 
I got all of those so I could buy video gear, and now my video gear takes up as much as the keyboards. Yeah, that's a that's a classic story. That's that's funny, man. Uh, so was it anything in particular that made you want to get the video? Did you just saw it and it was a cool piece of gear? You know, was it, it was like, like it was hard to get a hold of. Um, the mystique of it. Months. Yeah, well, you know, after it got released, you couldn't buy them because they were just like constantly sold out. They'd get in. You still can't in. buy them. They go away. Well, they're discontinued now, um, but uh, you know it's, it's like one the of those fastest product like, cycle. <laughs> yeah, it, it popped up on uh, I think it was like Control, and they're like, "Oh, we just got a batch in." They posted it on Instagram, and I was like, "Oh man, I'm just had enough fears to do this," so I did. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, but okay, so I, I'm curious, like. When you go out to see a performance, like what like gets you excited? Do you have like one that particularly Going stands out in your mind? Like it, I, I'm just curious if it's like something you saw out there, like this like audiovisual stuff uh, before. Maybe like subliminal message put it in your brain, or or just I'm just curious like what kind of art do you like to see also? You know, I, I, I think growing up in the 80s with CRTs and 8 and 16-bit video games, like, there's a certain aesthetic that comes with a cathode ray tube that is just really, I don't know, it, it, there's a nostalgia factor, and then it's also really pretty, and it's, like, kind of uh, historically and archaically interesting, and, and I think just that whole, like, tube look is something that I really appreciated and kind of forgot about, and you know, I'm kind of coming full circle with that and, and getting back into retro gaming lately, which is hilarious. But um, oh, yeah. I, I couldn't say there was like any like performance or something that really kind of stuck out to me. I mean, uh, I didn't really pay much attention to visuals when I was at shows, to be honest. And uh, really, you know, now obviously I've got an eye for it and I look and I'm like, oh, what are they doing? But uh yeah it was it was never uh it was never like oh i really like admire this guy's artist like i walked into this completely unaware of what it was or what was involved and and you know i just knew it was like modular synthesis and i was like i like modulars like how hard could it be and you know <laughs> and, a year and, a half, and i still have no idea what i'm doing so do you own any modern tvs or do you uh watch netflix on a crt uh <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I have I've got several 4K displays in the house, but uh, you know I've got my share of CRTs. That's that's just four of my CRTs right there. There's another one, there's another one out in the there's another one out in the hallway. There's another Sony out in the hallway, and then there's a Sony CRT in the living room, and then there's like two more oscilloscopes buried in the house somewhere. So we were talking about uh, the video for a while. I think there right? what. What makes a good video synth module, and what makes a bad one? A bad one. Ooh. Um, Whoa. You know, the the convention for video synthesis is very different from audio. Um, and when you think about like modular synths, you're like, all right, you know, I need a filter, a VCA, an oscillator. I need these like kind of core components to to make sound. And video synthesis is very much the same in that, like, you kind of need core things to really do at all. Uh, so it can kind of seem like modules don't do what you want them to do. Um, and I got tripped up a lot of times by buying a module because there's very little documentation about this stuff um, online. You know, it's not like oodles of div kit videos like they have for audio modular stuff so it's kind of like going into it very blindly and like <coughs> reading the description on on line and saying like okay i think i want that module and then you buy it and you try it out and you're like oh this doesn't work anything like i thought it was going to and so that could be a little like frustrating sometimes and i don't think that makes a module good or bad but um you know i know uh lars for instance has taken a lot of this into consideration about the kind of approachability of LZX modules and taking that into account when designing new instruments. So, you know, like the Cro-Magnon coming up is like, 
got a lot of those like weird quirks of the older systems kind of figured out. And now someone who's kind of a little less uh, knowledgeable about the subject can like really walk up to it and you know start playing with it. In theory, that's that's the idea. You know, obviously, no one's got a Cro Magnon yet, but I will soon, hopefully. So, you know, if you uh, find that there's not a lot of resources out there to learn these things, maybe you could have the YouTube channel that teaches everyone about these things. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've definitely considered that. And, um, you know, I think about it every day. But, you know, I look at the quality of production that people do on YouTube videos. It's and I'm crazy. Like, I, I can't do that. And I mean, like, even like the official LZX demo videos, like, yeah. they're not like giant productions, but they're really clean and really well done. And, you know, they're just they're just kind of perfect. And I'm, I'm, I'm not confident I could do that without a lot of practice. So, you know, maybe one day after I get this Twitch and live streaming thing under my belt, I can work on to like recording and, you know, then I can spend thousands of dollars on special cameras and all this <laughs> lighting. Yeah, for sure. It's a whole different world. It's like, it's really just something as just, we learned today. I just want to like mess around and make cool visuals, you know, like it would be cool to contribute like that, but at the same time, like it's so much work. Well, I saw on your Instagram you have a, a little thing that says direct message for uh, uh, what was the word? Kind of like for commission. commissions. Yeah, there. Yeah. Um, so have you? Uh, what's like the most interesting project or installation or collaboration you've done in the past year, year and a half that you've been into video synthesis? Uh, none yet, actually. Um, <laughs> so I only put that on my Instagram like two months ago or something like that. And I had a couple people hit me up right around when the pandemic started. And they're like, hey, I've got this project coming up. Love your visuals. Will you do something for me? And I'm like, yeah, you know, we get the conversation going. And then it's like, you know, everything's hitting the fan uh, and the news is going crazy. And then it's like, I just stopped hearing from them. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't blame you. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to work on then? What's you know, kind of like? I'd I'd love to you know make still images for people for you know whatever artistic purposes they have, whether it be like album art or something they want framed in their home. I've thought about getting some stuff, uh, like doing prints and stuff, but I'm also like, I really just feel like, I don't know, I'm really just like against making paper for whatever reason uh just for yeah. environmental purposes yeah very, you know i'm very like env environmentally conscious so um obviously you know i'm sure my carbon footprint is way bigger than i care to admit but um i don't know i just like i'd, I'd rather like make digital things because they don't take up any resources you know now yeah I'm seeing, i feel you now i'm seeing a big heart on the Same. screen over Oh, I don't know why. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. I don't know how to Skype. <laughs> that was wild. <laughs> Did anyway. not understand what was happening. Yeah, I, I'm. I mean, that that was a sweet performance, by the way. That was probably more varied than like ninety nine percent of performances I see here in LA, for sure. Like I would go and I would see kind of one progression which i always really appreciate like that's something i always aimed for in my own sets where it's like i could really take it from one place to another place to another place and have this like strong sense of progression and i, I felt that worked really well i just wanted to say that because i'm curious what you do have going on and if you could walk us through i don't know if your camera moves but if you could walk us through it that would be amazing I, I can definitely describe things from here and, and point them out. Um, so, yeah, the idea was to basically make two patches, more or less one inside Visual Cortex with uh, Memory Palace and then another one in the Vidiot. Um, and then I would patch the Vidiot into the other channel of Visual Cortex and then I would crossfade between them. So. That's why I was able to change things up so easily is because I would go to one new thing, then I would change up the other side, viewing it on like one of my little monitors here. Mm. And then I would, uh, uh, and then, you know, wait for the music to kind of shift a little bit and then switch to the next patch. And then I just kind of kept going back and forth. Um, I've got it rigged so up. Like so like a DJ almost sort of concept where it's like you have something queued up and then you queue it up and yeah, fade it in. Yeah, that's actually a pretty apt description, if you ask me. Um, 
that's that's definitely what I was doing, except there's multiple layers to it because I've got two video sources going into the modular, and that is Recur with a bunch of clips of Hypno and then Hypno itself. So I've got recorded Hypno and live Hypno being piped into the video synth, either into the video or into the visual cortex. And I can kind of like reverse them by moving the T-bar here. So I can say, you know, have Recur on here and Hypno on here going into Memory Palace, or I could flip that. And then to make things even better, I've got the uh, the Luma signals of both of those also going into this crossfader right here. And those Luma signals are going out to various things in the patches. So there's still a way to double or mix the two video scenes together, um, even though they're in separate patches. So I just, you know, move that one little knob and that allows me to, you know, put that Luma signal somewhere else or generate a key or whatever I want. So it's really set up so that I can go back and forth and continue changing things and mess with the color and then, you know, slowly fade back to the next one. And uh, as far as the music went, I kind of purposely put, you know, slow bits in between every little beat. So I would know like, oh, this is a good chance to like really change things up now. Nice. So yeah. what, were you, what were you using for music? Uh, so that is, and you can't see it, it's right here on my desk. That was an Electron Analog 4 and Electron Analog Rhythm. Cool. Um, it's just a bunch of patterns that I've written over the past year or so, and then today I arranged nice. them into a set. Very nice. Yeah, it had an Electron kind of vibe to it, so I wasn't sure of that. I'm a fanboy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious how like you got to this point because like you have a lot of gear but like did you so when you were setting this up did you have some kind of plan in mind uh or like did you have a specific like concept you were like looking to achieve with your visuals like did you have this sort of djing like a b situation like in your head you're like yeah i want to be able to like prepare another thing really quickly and then crossfade to the other thing or is that something that came about just like naturally from you like performing it and trying out just weird gear because you're just into trying weird gear? You know, uh, funny enough, a lot of the technique kind of just came to me over the last few days as I've been, you know, thinking about how I'm going to do this set. And, oh. You know, I just <laughs> I, I patched my video synthesizer for fun. So obviously I'm here and I'm thinking like, oh, I'm going to be doing something like I should kind of like pre root those things in my mind and kind of figure out what I want to do. And, and then it just kind of clicked, like, yeah, you know, I can really use the video and memory palace in tandem as two different inputs with video streams going to either one that are different. And I figured that had a lot of potential to be exploited. So, um, yeah, I mean, it kind of just it kind of just came to me recently. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely did some like uh, old and faithful techniques, you know, the way I key memory palace to get the feedback. But then like, you know, mixing it into color uh, allowed for a lot of variation to be uh, pulled out of it. And then also uh, because the videos on Recur are just kind of like, you know, switching automatically, it's like the, the visual kind of changes on its own. There's stuff that's happening that I don't even need to touch, um, which is kind of neat. Um, and yeah, right. you know, a, a big part of this was... Oh, that's the, the sampler, just to be clear, yeah. for posterity. Um, but, you know, yeah, a lot of the ideas I had kind of came from doing these uh, clip pack yesterday, all the videos I recorded, and used some of those in the, uh, in the set just now. So um, that was kind of me thinking about, like, you know, what kind of visuals do I want to see? And how can I put them together in a way that's going to... Uh, kind of like evolve and change and not be too repetitive. That's kind of the thing, you know, is like you don't want to, you don't want to hear a 16 step loop for two hours and you don't want to see the same visuals, you know, more than like 10, 15, 30 seconds or whatever, you know, you want things to kind of like change up. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I was just thinking about like, you know, what I like, what I want to see and and how I would execute that. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I've actually had the experience that when I go out and I do visuals for shows, I always tend to switch things much too fast. Like in music, people are always like, you're really just blasting me with all these like new visual information. Uh, I don't know if you've ever come across that 
but it's just like an interesting thing that I discovered over performing over the uh, months, years maybe already. Uh, so uh, it's an interesting balance because it's like I, I feel like music and video has like some similarities there where it's like they think the artist gets bored with it and wants to switch it all the time, but the audience may not necessarily. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think the ideal thing is to to have like a very drastic visual change every track, and then minor changes within that track. So very much in the way that I'm building my patches, you could do that. You could build a really nice and complex patch because you've got four or five minutes to do it instead of you know me fiddling for thirty seconds between different patterns. Um, but you know that's enough time to really build something nice and then slowly move over to that when uh, the next track starts and then kind of go back and forth. And then I think you could make subtle tweaks to that patch. If it's, if it's set up right, you know, with the right modulations and everything, you can definitely get a lot of mileage out of one patch. You can make something not repeat for several minutes. And that's really kind of, you know, that's an ideal way of doing things if you want to get the most variety out of the least amount of patches. So for this one, did you have mostly the music like pre-sequenced and yeah, then... all the yeah, all the music is coming live out of the electrons, but it's all pre-recorded patterns that are being played back in song mode. So um, okay, so you kind of like wrote some stuff. Yeah, all this stuff has been written for months, uh, and actually, I tried to do a set with it last year and got knocked off my ass for other reasons. But um, yeah, I finally <laughs> I finally did that set I promised to do last year. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, kind of sequenced them in a various order, um, to kind of create, I don't know, something of a structure. So is there any MIDI, uh, or like clock signal coming from the electrons? Uh, no, they're synced together, but, um, nothing going into the modular. I did, and I don't think you can see it in the video, but, uh, on the ground is my BeatStep Pro. Cause I was like, oh, you know what? I could take the clock out of the BeatStep Pro into the modular and maybe like make the visuals even more yeah uh, i did see pretty good visual sync there with the beat oh well so that was sensory translator um mm -hmm. that is a five band envelope follower so i've nice. uh, got three patch points coming out of that and uh that just makes things like beat reactive to different frequencies very cool yeah, so one's like tuned to the bass, for instance. So when you hear the kick, the, the screen kind of like zooms in a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, later on in the patch, it kind of like rotated to the beat. It's awesome. Nice. Yeah, nice. Uh, so switching gears a little bit, I had this question. I thought this would be an interesting uh, thing to discuss with you, Winston, particularly because you have probably maybe almost all of the video samplers at this point that exist uh <laughs> I, I, I don't know maybe i don't i don't know if you have like an entrancer or something no like, no i would kind of more would, oblique but yeah i would love to i would love to get some of those other ones but they don't seem like they're worth the money especially when they're i mean they're dated let's face it and like a lot of stuff i use is dated that's fine but like as far as like using digital files dated stuff is not fun um oh. you know i I can pick up an old video mixer and it's just all there. You know, if I have to load something onto an archaic piece of hardware that needs to connect to some weird port or whatever on my computer, then it can be a nightmare, you know? The scuzzy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, you know, it's still using like smart media cards or something. Like, I haven't had a smart media reader in five years, six years, maybe. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, there you go. There you go. It's kind of like a cassette. <laughs> It's like it's a cassette, a vinyl. <laughs> Slam it in there. It's a video. It's laser disc. Does it take laser, laser disc mixer? Yeah, <laughs> laser disc mixer. But uh, yeah, no, I mean I've I've got Recur, and that is I think the only video sampler I have, unless you count you a got Memory Palace. I know you have that at least. I guess that's yeah, kind of a. Is it that sample video or is it all stills? It can do it can do very short loops. Um, it's I don't know how many frames, but it, it seems like it's about a second of video that you can loop. Um, and I haven't really messed with it a whole bunch because looping video, I don't know, I think I have to wrap my head around it a little bit better to take advantage of it. Right now I'm having trouble with figuring out like exactly how it works. 
Um, but maybe I'll get back in to Memory it. Palace specifically, or just in, in Memory general? Palace. In Memory Palace, right? Yeah. So I mean, it, doesn't, I don't know. it doesn't record anything, and it can't play back video unless it's a still image or ARG the input from the video synthesizer. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Digital cool. frame store, I think it's what it's called. Digital frame. Okay. Interesting. So, like, what's what's missing on that front? Like, I, I was just curious. Like, what would you like to see on, on that front? Like, because I or think a, you have more experience with that kind of hardware than I do. Yeah. Like, honestly, just something that is a unified device um i don't know if you can see this very well but this is my recurve setup right here it's the pi it's the keypad to navigate and select videos and everything and then it's the nano control to you know change shaders and stuff like that and it's like all right i need these three pieces of hardware plus a usb drive plus a capture device plus this and this and this so it it it's not a very elegant setup i love using it and you know despite its quirks and difficulty to learn it is a very powerful unit it's just it would be really nice if there was just a box that had everything in it with hardware controls and the right inputs on the back and it just kind of took care of everything you know okay cool but otherwise it seems like you do go out of your way creatively to like make loops for it so it is yeah. very valuable to your oh, workflow. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, there are things like the the Roland P10 that I've looked at, but it's like, you know, $900,000 to buy one. And I'm like, well, yeah, but the Pi is like under 100 Yeah, uh, yeah. So Reeker is actually an open source video sampler project by, uh, what is it, Cyberboy something something? Cyberboy666, which is a very bold username in 2020. Uh, <laughs> I love it though. I think it's great. Uh, yeah, but that's that's, oh, that's Tim, awesome. That's Tim Caldwell, uh, man behind that. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, I was just curious what uh, where you saw it, where you wished it would go. Uh, so I guess my next question. I know you have analog things, digital things. I know we've talked about this a little bit before, but like, what do you think is the difference currently? Like, what are the quirks? Do you feel like some things are just, you know, like an audio, like there, there are some things that are just better done analog. There are probably some things you should probably be doing in the digital world just because it makes more sense and stop wasting your time doing it in the analog world. Uh, where do you think that line is for video? Um, Man, that's that's deep. That's uh, that's a big question. I don't... <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I just know people uh, talk about it a lot on audio, so I was wondering what it would be like for video. You know, <laughs> yeah. don't feel pressured. I don't think anyone's ever come to a consensus with it in audio anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, this isn't legally yeah, binding. I mean, I'm I'm all about hybrid. Um, personally, I've I've always had analog and digital synthesizers in my modular or in keyboards and. There's qualities to both that are great. There's things that you can do in digital that you might be able to do in analog, but you would need just an insane amount of gear or it's just impossible to begin with. And then analog has a certain quality to it. There's there's something unmistakable about analog that is, um, uh, you know, worth being sought after. So uh, I, I kind of like to base my setup around both. Um, both in audio and in video, and that's why, you know, I've got Hypno and Vidiot sitting right next to each other. They're kind of like the same but polar opposites in a way because they're both really great video synthesizers, but the approaches are completely different and the capabilities are completely different. So um, sure, yeah. I think the, the thing that matters for me the most to a degree is being patchable. I really like the video standard that LZX has come up with as far as being able to, you know, combine uh, different analog functions and oscillators and ramps and whatnot, and then uh, use them to kind of like compose visually, but in a almost like mathematically artistic fashion. 
Um, so that kind of stuff really fascinates me. And that's, you know, that's analog. There's, there's not really an easy way for digital to integrate in that. Um, <clears throat> but then again, you know, can't live without digital because there's just stuff I'll never do in analog. Yeah. yeah well, you, I, go ahead. Do you ever wish your viewers on Instagram could see what it really looks like in person on a CRT? Oh, <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. Because there's some there's something lost in translation there. I think. Yeah, getting 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 a good capture is really really hard, man. Um, For sure. You, know, you always <laughs> get that damn scrolling bar, and yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to spend, you know, a thousand bucks on a camera just to take pictures of a freaking TV. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's just, why. You know, the... I, another thing that's kind of exciting about moving forward is that I am going to kind of go more HD. Um, right. With Pro Magnon coming out and, you know, my, my mixer's HD, so I've already kind of set up to move forward with that. And LCDs are getting really good quality for really small amounts of money. So not saying I'm going to, like, abandon sd or my crts or anything but there is definitely that direction to go a little more modern to go for uh go for a little bit of that you know simplicity i guess that the, the well, future brings well some days you do things with a oscilloscope which is like the least resolution in color and in pixels <laughs> you know technically and then some days you do things on a CRT, and I could see you some days doing things in HD, and it's good to change it up for sure and have all the different aesthetics. Do you ever have you do you ever or have you ever approach video synthesis on your computer? We've learned today that you do in fact have a computer, since it looks like you're <laughs> staring at it right now. Do you seek it out? I, I I have like three computers in this room. Jeez, don't tell anyone. Um, yeah, um, I'm sorry. Say that question again. <laughs> Do you, have you that. ever uh, attempted video synthesis on the computer? Oh, right, yeah. Um, no, not really. Okay. So I'm, I'm a PC guy, and it seems like, um, uh, what's, what's the really popular one? Uh, Jitter? Maximus V Jitter? Yeah. No. I don't know. I don't know, something that's Mac only, as far as I remember. Uh, I did try out this one on Steam called Cathedemer, and I, uh, I, I didn't really hear that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, Lumen. I think you're thinking of Lumen. Oh, yeah, maybe that's it. Or maybe... Yeah. Uh, Lumen's okay. tight. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, I haven't messed with software a whole lot. Uh, it doesn't intrigue me the same way that, you know, working with a modular does. That's kind of important. That very, like, tactile and and hands-on quality. Yeah. Have you, uh, on that kind of note, have you, do you do ever do anything like uh, more traditional, like animation, like After Effects or video editing or something on that other side of video or no? No, no. And I've thought like, you know, maybe that's something I should try and learn, but then I don't want to be like glued to a computer working on stuff. Like I kind of want to just like capture something and be done with it, you know? I see yeah, so that's why, you know, the setup keeps growing because I'm like, oh, well, if I want to do these three things all at the same time, then I absolutely need that module. <laughs> so, you know, that leads to a lot of purchases because, you know, I want to make, I want to do as much in the box, so to speak, as possible and do as little post-processing as possible just because I'm not interested in that stuff. Like, it doesn't excite me the way that, like, working on the synth does. So do you take this in, this massive rig out to perform at like venues often or uh, not no not yet. Like... Um and actually I forgot what going out is like. I've been home for 3 months now. <laughs> yeah, similarly. <laughs> Pretty crazy, but um no, I haven't done any live performances before except like obviously the one I just did now, but um you know, I think if I was going to go out, I would probably try and take a pretty minimal setup, you know, really get the best bang for buck I can. So, you know, Vidiot, Hypno, maybe if I can swing it Memory Palace or something, and then like a mixer and a camera, like I would try and kind of whittle it down as much as possible. I see. Fortunately, those three can undo just like an insane amount of stuff together. So it's, it's true. Like, I wouldn't get bored <laughs> at all. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, for sure. It's it's like a different 
it's like a different thing when you try to leave the house and try to actually stream this stuff or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why you know, like creating content uh, really interests me. Uh, really interests me because I don't have to leave the house for that. I don't have to like break down the studio, pack it into my car, take it somewhere, risk you know getting it stolen out of my car or whatever after a loadout then dragging it all home late at night. I mean, yeah, it's probably going to be fun and make some money or something, but it's a hell of a lot of hassle. Uh, working here at home in my studio kind of by myself is just it's a lot more attractive. Yeah, I feel... Well, on that note, have you done, like, streaming before? Is that something that you have thought of doing? Because that's something you could perform without leaving your house, in theory. Yeah, no, I did a uh, I did a YouTube stream the other night. I think you watched it actually, um, where I was messing with Memory Palace. Uh, what well, maybe that was like two oh, weeks ago. Or part of it. Yeah, yeah but um, that was just kind of trying it out and testing the waters, and I was like, yeah, this is pretty fun, you know. Like I'm doing what I do every night. I'm just dicking around with my video synth. Uh, the only difference is I'm broadcasting it to everyone else. <laughs> So I better, you know, not walk away for 45 minutes or whatever. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm prone to do. <laughs> Just let the visual run. Yeah. Let it no, take its so course. I, th I think it would be cool to do more of that in the future. And I'm also going to, you know, spend more time creating video packs and stuff like that. Um, you know, I like I like creating those. I like giving something to the community. Um you know, especially if I can give it away for free and then, you know, hope that some people send me a couple bucks here and there. Yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks, everyone that did donate for Grayscapes, by the way. Yeah, Grayscapes is cool. We're going to have, hopefully, something real new for me real soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we saw a small preview of it in my set there. Yeah. Secrets. Awesome. Secrets. <laughs> Not so secret on the Reeker group. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you already post it on the Reeker group? Oh, I told them yesterday. I was like, here's a screenshot of all the files I just took. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, dude, they got to know. They're foaming. They got to know what's coming. Tell you. I'm sure. I don't, I don't do Facebook much, but... Yeah, so so it sounds like a lot of the streaming you've been doing is just like YouTube, Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Much. All right. Interesting. Yeah, it's been interesting because I feel like it's like a natural location for video and audiovisual art to be but it's not there yet and i'm trying to figure out why not probably because it's difficult to get it all up and running as we have found out today yeah it's the last time i did this and, it's difficult to get it up and running and uh it's hard like i think if you release like a song right or you stream a song we're kind of used to hearing music, you know, play back on crappy speakers at this point. And, you know, as long as the song has maybe a good melody, there's something always good to find. With visuals, I feel like, like we were talking about before, if like Instagram kind of does some weird compression to your visual and you upload it, it looks like crap, it smacks you in the face. <laughs> it's a, I mean, I same like with it's audio. It's an immediate it's... reaction sometimes because we're just so used to hearing shitty streams of music by now but like this complex visual art we're not used to seeing a compressed stream of which is a theory yeah every, any anytime something of mine goes online i'm just like ah oh, it just completely lost the magic you know yeah i mean i feel similarly about music also once i've hit record it's it's like not the same <laughs> oh yeah well, it's, like, yeah, oh. it's, it's interesting parallels for sure yeah, something to be said about being in the moment, you know? For sure, for sure. Well, that's why streaming can be really great, but not easy. Yeah, hopefully we can figure that out for the future. <laughs> Maybe that's there's a somebody... really nice visual you just, you just put up right there. It's nice. I literally, I got up at like 10 a.m. today, and I spent the entire day getting ready for this set to do like 15 minutes or whatever. I mean, like, all the just like little finicky stuff I had to do. I mean, I had to build that set and that was a pretty significant amount of time, but like, you know, like making sure the patch is right. And then I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I need to, uh, I need to connect the capture card. And then like, oh, I need like a, uh, I need a component distributor so I can go to the CRT and to the capture device. And then, uh, 
friggin' microphone was, you know, forever to figure out and then getting the camera to work and it stopped working for a little while. And it's just like nightmare after nightmare. And then sure enough, like five minutes before I was like, all right, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Same here, man. It's Same the, here. I, I like literally t- value once again, just to get it to this point is so difficult. Sure yeah. is, man. It's yeah. like, I feel like I test every single little bit before I do the live streams and yet it all breaks. <laughs> it's like for us to be able to just do like some audio and videos going in there, like took us probably like three or four times of like failing, actually trying to do it, like live streaming and setting everything up and failing. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'm sorry about the uh, the sleep stream debacle, uh, but hopefully that in the next one I'm I'm gonna figure out all the uh, sort of shortcomings and bring it all together. It seems like the difficulty right now in that workflow is how to get like somebody you know like the sort of streaming in and then out to the internet because it seems like having a single node, having everything happen locally and streaming one time works just fine. But if you have somebody streaming in and streaming out, I have not been able to get that to really like work that smoothly yet. So maybe there's something we could uh, smooth out there. So thanks for uh, doing all of this. I appreciate you guys and letting me try it out. It was fun. And we appreciate our viewers too, the ones who are still with us for uh, going through this journey. And honestly, this visual at the end was worth all the time. I'm really <laughs> digging it. <laughs> no, for real, it was a cool performance, man. Like it's it's it was, difficult it to find good AV things. Like even like I, I I mean I do a lot of my fair share of like going out to well when it's not quarantine time, going out to different events and stuff. And it's always like you see visuals and there's like I don't know like two patches like the whole night and it's just like the same thing. And it's just like, oh, to me especially, it's just depressing, you know? You're just like, why? Yeah, <laughs> well, man, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to the fact that it's totally, uh, it's, it's a massive effort to get a lot of different things going. Now, if someone's just bringing a laptop and doing something lame like that, then that's their fault. But, yeah, I mean, that was... I mean, even scary. with the Dude, laptops... I mean, that's the thing. It's like if you're uh, gonna bring your laptop, like do do a do something more more varied, man. Yeah, I remember, I remember the argument when the hardware craze kind of first launched was, uh, oh, I don't, you know, I'm performing with synths because I don't want to bring a laptop and have the laptop crap out during the performance. Like people yeah. used to use that justification for spending thousands of dollars on synths, and at this point, I feel like we're all like, it's all difficult. It's all gonna crash. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You just gotta try, try, try you gotta again. Keep trying. It's gotta keep trying. Hopefully, eventually, it works out. Oh man, story of my life. <laughs> well, hypno works great. Yeah, man, that was part of the idea, right? It's like you just plug it in, then it works. That's all you can really hope for. <laughs> yeah, man. It's pretty. Sure. It is pretty easy to use hypno. That's good. I'm, I'm I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> I worked really hard on that. Uh, yeah, hopefully. I don't know. Have you tried the NDI capabilities yet or no? No. If you got a lot of computers, you should check it out. Because you can yeah. stream directly into like vSynth or like Max and something like this. Yeah. Like go real deep. Or just record directly for when, you know, you want to get a super clean capture. I mean... Right off the HDMI is really nice. That's true. Yeah, when you've got the gear for it, for sure. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, shuttle fits in my back pocket, so. Yeah, it's been a weird time for capture cards. Yeah, there's crazy price light. gouging on them now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Weird. yeah, webcams too, I heard. Yeah. Like, our, our hobby got hijacked by <laughs> everyone. <laughs> by the virus, it's like, oh, everybody's into video capture now, suddenly. And then there's like the Vectrex collectors and they're like, our hobby got hijacked by those video synth assholes. <laughs> Vectrex, man. I... Seriously. That's a lot serious, of money on those. Serious business. I haven't gotten that deep yet. Vectrex, man. 
Yeah. Um, what kind of retro games you play in? And I mean, I grew up on Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis, so that's that's what I play. Um, that's great. I just, did, you, uh, did you see that you can run Dolphin on iOS now? It's pretty nuts. Dolphin? The the GameCube emulator. And oh, like, oh! You wow. can run it on iOS like jailbreak free now. It's pretty tight. That's wild. That's awesome. Yeah, you should check it out. You can. Be there for Apple, probably gonna take that down soon. I don't know how the process is like, but I think you like side load it or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, the um. Yeah, my favorite game is Super Metroid, as Ron knows very well. <laughs> it's a good game. game. I yeah. play it constantly. Yeah. I'm gonna go play some Sonic after this. That's great. Hey, I'm Sonic. looking at this this gray space. Uh, I mean, I've seen it gray once space. before, but um. And these other video packs we got here on the site. Yeah, we've got two right now. I believe we have there. refractions and grayscapes. But oh, more grayscapes. are coming soon. Yeah. 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 More are coming soon. I can't read. Sorry, guys. Um, they're really great. I'm looking forward to seeing what you're working on, though. Oh, the next one's going to be really cool. Yeah. It's all 100% hip now. This yeah. is like this is the artwork, <laughs> man, that you want to publish. I mean, I think this is a nice. I don't know, you know. I think this is a nice venue for it. You're not leaving your home, and did you do grayscapes? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was him. I thought so. Okay, cool. I just called it the wrong thing before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Refractions was uh, God Tease, which is yeah, that's right. The, the girl who played last time on the performance section. Which also semi worked. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping to do more of those with assorted people. I have a few lined up. I was Both hoping. The stills and the video just look incredible, though. They just. Well, they're probably captured, like, actually full resolution and not. Yeah. Like... Yeah, I, I, I run yeah. everything through. Um, <clears throat> I run component out of Visual Cortex into a RetroTink 2X which, funny enough, is actually intended for retro gaming. Um, but it's got a really lightning-fast line doubler and smoothing filter in it, so there's like a less than a frame of lag coming out of this thing. Um, so it'll convert 480i into 480p coming out HDMI. So it's, meant, it's really meant for converting retro consoles to play with HD TVs by giving you better scaling than you would get on like a modern TV um, and giving it to you lag-free because like by the frame button presses are very important in retro gaming. Yeah. Um, and then I put that into the Blackmagic uh, intensity shuttle and I just capture it full quality. Yeah, I mean, nice. you just project this up on a wall and there you go, you got an art installation. Yeah, yeah. Or Installed it's it. Beautiful. Or, you know, three or four of them going different colors and rotating yeah. around. I got ideas. <laughs> you have a, uh, a bright future and that sort of thing, honestly. It's really great work. It's really super cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, the idea there was that just like, I don't know, when the quarantine hit, I was thinking like, how can I kind of, I don't know, help the fellow artist make some yeah. money? So <laughs> I was like, well, we could put stuff on the site and like collect donations for those people, just kind of direct to them just to see if people even like this sort of thing. Because, you know, I guess, I guess sample packs for music are a thing, but video packs I have not seen as much. Yeah. A lot of them are just, like, Resolume themselves, I think, probably make some, like, video packs specifically for, like, their v VJ software. But none are really targeted towards, like, people using it kind of, like, towards, like, this odd, like, sampled synthesis. So I think it's definitely something new, which is yeah. exciting. None of that stuff is like really visually interesting. I mean, it's like it's very complex and high def and bright yeah. and saturated. And it like, yeah, OK, it looks like, you know, freaking wallpaper from 2005 uh, yeah. computer wallpaper. You know, it's like the kind of thing you download. It's like, oh, man, I'll find the one for my computer. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's just not a lot of magic to it. It's just like, oh, yeah, well, someone made that on a computer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think. I think you're right. It's not like screen savory at all. Your work, it has a whole different kind of vibe to it. And like, 
if I think about the stock videos and like Max MSP jitter, they're just like a guy playing basketball or like construction truck or just <laughs> like. Wow, that's really boring. <laughs> I get it. They just use them for example patches and stuff like that. But like, you know, that's I'd not... rather do something with the, the, this video pack. Not that like try to sell it so much, but even the stills are great. It's it's, it's super cool looking. I'm looking forward yeah. to the next one. And, you know, the idea with the, the video packs, at least my intention, is to not make something that you would necessarily play on its own. Like, you could. You could project grayscapes, and it might look pretty cool, especially if you can throw some color onto it, and especially if you could layer a couple of them. But that's the idea, is, like, do something more interesting with it. Like, this is... You know, this is like just a brush on your canvas and you've got all these different video clips that are just slightly different from each other, but they've got these kind of cool geometric animations and they're good for layering with other things or applying effects to, applying colorizers to, feedback, whatever. On their own, they might be a little boring, but once you start kind of playing with them, it's like the whole world opens up. I think yeah, of like sure. I think of them as like construction kits basically, like Maybe usable on their own, but really intended to to be processed. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think that's definitely like something new in this whole sphere. I don't see a lot of that. That's pretty exciting. But yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I think Brian and I have been talking about it. It's like it's like you don't necessarily need tons of resolution in order to make something look interesting and engaging. Like. You put Hypno on a 4K TV, it's going to be different than putting Hypno on a like a old old monitor. It's going to have a different feel, and it's like, yeah, like all, like just so, something about just like those pure colors, like synthesized colors. It's just, it's like you don't need the resolution. Your brain is already like, holy crap, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, and it's a completely different thing than projecting it as well oh yeah yeah getting a good projector is that's a lot of money right there not something i've really <laughs> invested in I've, I've got a cheap one off of ebay and i'm like man the colors on this thing are just crap <laughs> yeah projectors are difficult man and really having i mean the biggest thing you can do is just have like the right environment for projection yeah and, and, it's always you know, too bright <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can't black out my studio during the day. I've gone into my garage before. I've, like, tried to cover up the windows on the garage door, but it's still, it's like, oh, I remember uh, that. All, all this bleed through. So, yeah, it's like, I got to do it at night. And and then, like, projecting by myself seems kind of weird. Have, they, have you had those, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to one of those, like, bring your own Beamer events? We've had a couple of them here. They're pretty weird. It's like where they, it's like a, it's like a jam, but with projectors and like everyone brings a projector. Um, that and so silly. you all it's point really, in the same space or you spread them out? No, you <laughs> just, uh, you find a giant warehouse and you try to like spread them out into all of the walls so that every inch of wall is covered by some strange projection. That's pretty sweet. That's great. It's, it's great, but it's also very overwhelming. Yeah. Well, I hey, I'm, I mean. Big warehouse is a good way to adhere to social distancing guidelines. Yeah. But if you go into like an art gallery and you see one of those projectors that's like silent and just looks beautiful no matter what the lighting condition is, it's it's like ruins all consumer projectors for you. For you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're, you're never going to afford something like that. Cause it's... I, I mean, I'm sure in Texas, too, you're just sitting in your garage and it's hot and the oh, fan yeah. and the projector's just blasting. The last the last couple of months have been nice. And I've been able to go in the garage and like do, you know, garage work and stuff like that. But I went in there yesterday, I think, during the middle of the day. And it was just it's like 85 degrees in the garage. And I was like, well, so much for doing projections in the garage for the rest of the year. <laughs> it's, it's over. Back to the studio I go. Yeah. Air conditioning. Cool, man. Well, that's all the questions I had. I don't know if Ryan had any more. No, I'm out as well. I was out in the first like five minutes. You <laughs> pretty much brought up things that I was going to ask about. Let me see. Yeah, video editing. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Well, that was good. That seemed pretty comprehensive. Yeah, I yeah, would say. A lot. Yeah. 
rambly maybe but if anyone's still watching uh why <laughs> because they want to see winston winston has a lot of good oh, fans yeah. loyal fans come on main attraction. And he did great it was an awesome performance yeah thank great you video pack on the sleepy site thank it's you still blowing my mind with this tribal thing that's going on on the sides of your video <laughs> for sure really yeah man figure out how to put it into skype <laughs> Yeah, no, that actually that was an accident because I've got the <laughs> I've got the webcam layered on the video since now. I just kind of switched it around and then I was like, "Oh, I like that." Nice. <laughs> and it's reacting to my to my voice. I don't know if you can see that. Ah. No, yeah. Oh. <laughs> ah. It's awesome. Yeah, cuz sensory translator's got a little microphone on it. That's that's crazy, dude. You're, you're out well, there, man. Thanks yeah, thanks so much. Wisdom and magic. It's awesome. It's been awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely going to post this up. Hopefully some people enjoy listening to this. Uh, I hope to have you on the show again. That was a great performance. Hopefully yeah. next time it won't be as challenging to get it all up and running. Because, you know, the first time's always the hardest. Uh, yeah, we get one under our belt and hopefully get a lot better after that. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, thanks for joining you guys. That was, I suppose, Sleepstream 2 in a couple of chunks. I hope we can recover that performance and actually slam it into, the, I can maybe edit that into the video or something. I'm looking at uh, our somehow. videos, and it's, it's not in there, unfortunately, and it's oh, definitely dear. not in my videos. Was so. that lost to the other? <sighs> That's unfortunate. Yeah, I wish, I wish I'd known about that setting. I was like, I'm looking in my past videos and it's not there. There's some there's... things about Twitch just drive me nuts, like some like it's basic usability things where I'm like, I, maybe I don't want everybody notified every time my head starts streaming. Maybe I just want to test it. Yeah, I, I got an email. We, need, to, we need to have a sleep stream with like a pro gamer to give us all the Twitch tips. Yeah, maybe. Twitch tips and tricks. <laughs> be like, be like a gamer advises artists on how to live stream life. Perfect. <laughs> Something like this. Something really wordy like that so that nobody ever clicks on it. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, all right. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, that was Sleepstream 2. We got Particles into Waves uh, and uh, Becoming Brian. Those are the artist names, but Winston and Brian. My name is Ron from Sleepy Circuits. Uh, definitely check out Winston's Grayscapes video pack. There's going to be more to come. Uh, some lines will be involved. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, it was a great time talking to you guys. Once again, thanks so much for coming on and agreeing to talk to me. It's been really great, especially in this time of not being able to talk to people in isolation. Uh, and yeah, it's been great. I hope you guys have an awesome evening. And likewise to anyone watching, adios. Cheers. Have a good night.